And we are now moving to the next presentation, uh, which is uh, entitled Exploration in Recommender Systems. And the presenter is going to be Min Min Chen from Google. Um, hi, can you see my screen well? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, now, now we see your screen. Okay. All right, uh, this is Min Min from Google and I'm here to discuss the work on uh, understanding exploration in recommender systems. Um, so this is a joint work with many collaborators from Google. All right, so the, uh, the main contribution of the work is that uh, we want to tease apart the different roles exploration plays uh, in recommender systems and discuss the uh, challenges in measurements and optimization for a different type of exploration and then propose some initial solutions. Um, so while exploration exploitation trade-off uh, is well studied in uh, reinforcement learning and bandits literature, um, the role it plays in recommender systems is actually not uh, very clear. So uh, for most uh, industrial recommenders these days are powered by uh, ML models that has been uh, trained on um, a large amount of user item interaction pairs. Uh, the problem with this setup of learning is that it usually induces a very strong feedback loop uh, that creates uh, the rich gets richer uh, effect, which means that uh, the hat content are getting more and more exposures while the tail and fresh content are hard to discover. Um, and it also has the tendency to pigeonhole users to um, contents that they are already familiar with. And we believe exploration is the key to um, move away from this uh, feedback loop and to truly optimize for the uh, long-term user experience on the recommendation platforms. So we see three uh, different roles exploration can play in recommender systems. First is what we call a system exploration, which um, focuses on surfacing tail and fresh content based on users knowing interest. And the second is what we call user exploration, which focuses on uh, identifying unknown user interests or try to introduce users to new interests. And the third is what we call uh, online exploration, um, where the, the goal is to try to utilize real-time user feedback so that we can reduce the extrapolation error when performing a uh, system and user exploration. So connecting uh, all of that back to RL, so the system exploration can help the RO agents understand the uh, action space it is operating in better. And the user exploration helps the agent uh, understand the underlying user state better. Uh, while the online exploration can help the uh, efficiency of the IO learning algorithm to uh, generate a better learning, uh, recommendation policy. So on system exploration, uh, the main challenge is actually on the uh, measurement side. So uh, what we are um, wanted to point out here is that you actually wanted to maybe uh, rethink how you wanted to measure uh, exploration, a system exploration in your experiment. So when people perform a uh, system exploration to surface more tail and fresh content, they often see that it uh, leads to a neutral uh, experimental result um, and Sometimes they often see a negative results as well. So, and we hypothesize the reason is that um, actually a regular user directed uh, A-B test, which means that randomly assign users to a control and experiment group and then compare the performance between the two can only measure the cost of system exploration in serving a less certain content. Um, but we believe that system exploration has other indirect effects that cannot be measured uh, in this setup. So first, system exploration can uh, acquire data to improve the model quality. And second, system exploration can help enlarge uh, the discoverable corpus or catalog. Um, third, the system exploration can help um, increase uh, content providers users have access to. And these uh, improvements in model corpus and content provider can in return 
help the user experience on the platform. Um, and the challenge is the benefit of system exposure in model corpus and content provider actually cannot be measured in a regular user diverted experiment. And of course, there might be some direct effect of system exploration in servicing tail or fresh contents to the users. And this part of the benefit should be measurable in a uh, user diverted A-B test. Um, so the work is focusing on how can we measure these effects of system exploration on uh, model uh, corpus and content providers. So first, a system exploration can help reduce model, quality, uh, model uncertainty in regions where we have sparse user uh, feedback, uh, but regular A-B tests cannot measure the data benefit because the control and experiment group are usually trained on the same data. And second, the experiment traffic, which uh, has been running the uh, system exploration algorithm is often too small to train the underlying, uh, to, to inference the underlying data used for training. So what we're proposing here is a data diverted experiment where uh, basically we will be running the uh, exploration experiment on a much larger uh, portion of the traffic, say 10% uh, to 50% of your, uh, your full uh, user base. And then uh, we will be training the, train, uh, the, the control and the experiment model on different uh, traffic. And then we compare the two models, one is trained with uh, exploration data and one without on a regular A-B test. And the gap between the two uh, models in, uh, in the user experience is actually measuring the benefit of exploration in improving the model quality and then as a return, uh, improving the user experience. Um, Similarly, system exploration can help increase the proportion of discoverable corpus, uh, meaning a uh, contents that are, will be of values to users. And a regular A-B test cannot measure the corpus benefit because uh, the experiment traffic that is running the system exploration algorithm is often too small, uh, say 1%, to really influence the dynamics of the full corpus that are 100% uh, of the corpus. So what we're proposing here is to run a user and corpus joint diverted experiment. So that in the experiment group, the uh, X percent of users is only in charge of ex uh, exploring X percent of the corpus. And similarly, the control group uh, users is only uh, accessing uh, X percent of the corpus. And then we compare these two group on a corpus uh, related metrics uh, to measure the effect of system exploration in increasing the discoverable uh, corpus. So to, uh, to con connect the full story, uh, meaning that system exploration can uh, enlarge the corpus and then further uh, a larger corpus can actually help the user exper experience. We basically conducted the experiment where uh, we uh, in fact actually reduces the, uh, the corpus size so uh, what you can see here are, uh, so this blue curve here, we actually reduces the corpus the user uh, will have access to uh, from 100% to 90%. Uh, so basically means that for each user, 10% of the corpus is randomly uh, filtered out uh, during the experiment, uh, in the experiment group. And we can see that actually the user experience actually degenerates significantly uh, when we do that, and the experience uh, is getting worse and worse during the experiment phase. So from these results, uh, we hypothesize that if we were able to, uh, on the other hand, increase the corpus size, then the user experience hopefully will be uh, improved. So once, um, you, uh, once we can measure the benefit of system exploration on these different components of the system, then we can basically study or compare the efficiency of different exploration strategies, uh, such as uh, to, to improve tail and fresh recommendations by improving generalization or use uh, uncertainty-based uh, exploration techniques such as um, ensembling or bandits. Uh, now, second part on user exploration, we actually have another publication at this uh, same venue um, focus on that. So I will uh, actually recommend uh, everyone who's interested to go to our talk in two hours later, uh, because I have to keep this part uh, very brief, uh, brief due to uh, time constraints. 
Um, so the main contribution of this uh, work is actually uh, to show that curiosity-based exploration, which are uh, a, a, a set of techniques developed in RL uh, that focus on encourage discovering of unknown user interests or try to introduce users to new interests can actually lead to a long-term um, user experience uh, improvement. And now the third part on online exploration. Um, so exploration in recommended systems is actually very uh, challenging because it means that um, we essentially is asking the agent to accurately estimate the values of user item pair it has never seen before or uh, rarely seen before. Uh, it is challenging recommended systems because we are dealing with extremely large uh, user and item base with power law distributions, meaning that there are a lot of user item pairs uh, which uh, the agent has never seen uh, feedback on these uh, pairs on, uh, before. And then um, the, the noisy reward uh, that we observe is also very hard to reason about. And compared to many standard RL applications, exploration uh, in recommended system is much more expensive because um, an efficient exploration can actually hurt the user experience on the platform. So the one solution we're proposing here is uh, to actually use online learning or on policy learning to take into account real-time user feedback when uh, performing uh, exploration so that we can reduce the extrapolation error. Um, meaning that if uh, an exploration has uh, shown to the user a wrong recommendation and then the user feedback can be directly taken into account to uh, self-correct the errors. So uh, what we're proposing here is basically an online learning system which uh, basically triggers event aggregate and model update in every minute, meaning that the, uh, the time delay or the latency between a user giving feedback and that feedback is used to train the model and further that model is used to serve the user. This whole end-to-end -end latency is controlled under one minute. Um, so by combining this online learning system with a simple linear contextual bandits algorithm, that assumes a linear payoff uh, between the, uh, the reward we observe and then the, uh, the underlying contact we use to model. Um, we, uh, and then we further perform exploration, uh, Thompson sampling at uh, serving time for exploration. And this simple setup actually leads to uh, over 20% improvement on one of the top line metrics and then more than 2% uh, improvement on user retention, which is a very hard to move matrix. So this scales of improvement is something we have never seen before, which does suggest that there are a lot of headroom in this directions of uh, using online learning to in improve uh, user experience. Um, so in summary, um, in this work, we basically try to uh, understand the different roles exploration can play in recommended systems and discuss the different challenges in measurement and in optimization. And we propose some solutions to, um, uh, to start the work in this direction. And we hope uh, these um, can serve as a foundation for uh, more work in the direction of exploration. Um, yeah, and thanks for the attention of everyone, and I can take questions now. Thank you, Min Min, for your great talk. Uh, we don't have any questions from the audience here on site. Uh, we do have um, a very good question from Anthony Jameson. The question is, do you think it's important for users to know that the system is engaging in exploration? For instance, could this knowledge make them more tolerant of recommendations that are not immediately um, useful? That's a, that's a great question. So I think um, that's something we are definitely thinking of. Basically, for example, if we can make the interface um, or uh, more visible to the users, uh, basically, uh, uh, letting the user knows that uh, some of these contents are actually focusing more on, um, on exploration and is trying to understand their preferences better, then the user could be more tolerant uh, to the mistakes the recommender is making. Uh, 
Uh, but that's something uh, we haven't experimented with. It's something uh, we are planning to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I think we have time for just one more question. And it's going to be from the audience on site. Hi, uh, Francois from Amazon. I had a quick question about the exploration. Um, so, uh, uh, sometimes we observe that a lot of users tend to just like hearing popular content, and sometimes they like to discover more things. And I was wondering if you look into that at all, like, for which, are you, are you looking into how to identify users for which, that, that like exploration, as opposed to users who hate it, for example? I think uh, that's that's a great question. So we don't have uh, definite uh, answers on that. So one thing uh, we have been started looking into is um, so basically use the historical data to uh, try to um, so that that's uh, so in the in the talk that we are going to uh, do later on. Uh, what we can do one thing we have been doing is basically compare, for example, the. Uh, the user uh, content consumption to their historical uh, activities on the platform, try to understand, uh, for example, if a user tends to consume, uh, repeatedly consume uh, similar content, or they actually uh, uh, will uh, consume something different than they, uh, uh, they have consumed before. So that could be one indicator of uh, whether a user is more exploratory or uh, they just wanted to focus on the content they are already familiar with. So another thing that uh, we have been looking into is uh, basically try to utilize the users, um, uh, for example, different kind of engagement behavior on the platform, try to understand. Um, so for users, let's say if they have very high um, um, click-through rate on the platform, uh, so estimated the CPR on the on the platform for the different content, uh, then we can assume that the user is actually in uh, highly engaged or exploitation mode. Well, if the user is uh, actually having a low uh, CPR estimate on, on the different content we recommended, then we can um, maybe conclude that the user is more uh, more in exploration mode and actually wants to see something different than we have already recommended to them. Thank you. Thanks again, our speaker. And um, well, uh, I encourage uh, all the questions that uh, I couldn't transcript. Please uh, post them on the offline Q&A for the paper. I, th there were great questions that I couldn't uh, trans I mean, ask. So the next um, paper is uh, Black Box Attacks on Sequential Recommenders via Data-Free Model Extraction and it's presented by Zenwi Yue.